I'll never forget the day my world came crashing down. I was standing in my condo, phone still clutched in my hand, the sound of my ex-husband's voice echoing in my mind. The words, sign the divorce papers, still lingered, a harsh reminder of the end of our three-year marriage. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut, the air knocked out of me. The memory of that moment is etched in my mind like a scar, a constant reminder of the fragility of relationships. As I stood there, trying to process the sudden turn of events, my lawyer burst out laughing. Tears streamed down his face as he wiped his eyes with a handkerchief. I was confused, unsure what to make of the situation. My name is Karen, and I'm the CEO of a successful company. My husband James and I had been married for three years, but our busy schedules had taken a toll on our relationship. We'd grown apart, seeing each other only occasionally. Despite the challenges, we'd managed to make our marriage work. We'd bought a condo in a prime location, a decision that had paid off in the long run. It was a symbol of our commitment to our future together. I've been fortunate to have a close friend from high school, Olivia. We'd remained close over the years, often grabbing lunch together. She's a beautiful woman with high standards for men, always looking for someone with a good education and a high income. I've known Olivia since our high school days, and we'd shared many memories together. We'd even shared our dating experiences, knowing each other's preferences and types. One day, we met for lunch at a cafe near a park. We'd gone to the same high school and university, and our friendship had endured over the years. As we caught up, Olivia mentioned she'd never been to my condo before. She'd always been curious, and I'd invited her over for a visit. When she arrived, she was amazed by the spacious upper-floor condo. The elevator ride was a novelty, and she was impressed by the stunning views. As we chatted, Olivia couldn't help but remark on the condo's value, guessing it was worth over a million dollars. Her eyes widened with astonishment, and I felt a twinge of embarrassment. James's salary was good, but I didn't want to brag about it. As we sipped tea and enjoyed the cookies she'd brought, Olivia asked if she could stay till evening. She wanted to meet James, and I sensed an ulterior motive behind her request. I felt a sense of unease, wondering what she was really after. Little did I know, my life was about to take a dramatic turn. It had been a while since my wedding day, and I couldn't help but feel a pang of curiosity about my friend James. I decided to check in with him just in case, and he happily agreed to meet up. I informed my wife Olivia, and then I started preparing dinner. But when she got up to use the bathroom, I didn't notice she was gone for quite a while. When she finally returned, she was wearing a familiar necklace that belonged to me. As I stared at it in shock, Olivia gave me an embarrassed smile and asked if it suited her. She posed like a model, and I couldn't help but laugh at her antics. However, as I looked at the necklace, I felt a sense of unease. It seemed Olivia had been snooping around the bedroom, and I couldn't help but wonder what else she might have touched. As I tried to brush it off, Olivia made a surprising request. She wanted to borrow the necklace for a date with a doctor she met on a dating app. I hesitated, but eventually agreed to lend it to her. But as I handed it over, I couldn't shake off the feeling that she had been snooping around the bedroom. When I finished cooking, I pretended to go to the bathroom to check the bedroom. And that's when I discovered the truth. The closet was open, and there were fingerprints on the jewelry and watches. It seemed Olivia had been rummaging through our belongings, trying on shoes and bending the heels out of shape. I confronted her, and she looked sheepish but didn't apologize. I tried to brush it off, not wanting to ruin our friendship. But as we sat down to dinner, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. James had just arrived, holding a box of cake, and it was awkward at first. But as they started talking, they slowly warmed up to each other. I was relieved, but also a bit uneasy. James wasn't usually the type of man Olivia went out with, and I couldn't help but wonder what she saw in him. As I cleaned the dishes, I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease. James and Olivia were laughing together, and I couldn't help but feel like I was stuck in the middle. I tried to brush it off, but the feeling lingered. As I looked at James and Olivia chatting like old friends, I couldn't help but wonder what the future held for them. As I reflect on the months that followed Olivia's visit, I am struck by the profound and devastating changes that took place in James. He became increasingly distant, 
often lost in his phone and rarely present in our conversations. It was as if he was checked out, leaving me feeling like an afterthought. Our conversations at home became a rarity, and our weekends, once a time for us to reconnect, were now spent apart. The final blow came when I stumbled upon divorce papers on the living room table, signed by James. The shock was palpable as I dialed his number, my heart racing with a mix of fear and anger. The voice on the other end was not what I expected. It was Olivia, her tone cold and detached. She revealed that she and James were now a couple, and she even wanted to marry him. The news hit me like a ton of bricks, leaving me reeling. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut, the air knocked out of me. The memory of her words still echoes in my mind. You just need to sign the divorce papers and send them off. The call ended abruptly, leaving me feeling lost and alone. The days that followed were a blur of sleepless nights, my mind racing with thoughts of betrayal and heartache. James refused to discuss the situation, insisting that there was nothing left to talk about. Olivia's words still echo in my mind, and I can almost hear her smug tone as she gloated about her new relationship. The days turned into weeks, and I struggled to find my footing. Olivia continued to taunt me, sending me photos of her and James together, flaunting their relationship. It was like she was rubbing salt in my wounds, and I felt like I was drowning in a sea of despair. My mental health began to deteriorate, and I found myself withdrawing from the world. As the weeks turned into months, I struggled to find my footing. I started to withdraw from my friends and family, feeling like I was losing myself in the process. My mental health continued to deteriorate, and I found myself struggling to get out of bed in the morning. It wasn't until I was forced to seek treatment that I began to find some semblance of peace. I started taking medication and slowly began to rebuild my life. But just as I thought I was making progress, I discovered that our home had been burglarized, bags and jewelry were missing, and I was left feeling violated and helpless. The experience left me reeling, and I was advised to consult a lawyer. As I look back on those tumultuous months, I am reminded of the importance of self-care and the need to prioritize my own well-being. It's a journey I'm still on, but I am determined to emerge stronger and more resilient than ever. As I sat in my lawyer's office, I couldn't help but feel a surge of determination coursing through my veins. I had finally worked up the courage to take action against the two people who had wronged me so deeply. My lawyer asked me what I wanted to do, and without hesitation, I replied, I want a divorce. I want them to face the consequences of their actions. It was a moment of clarity, one that surprised even me. Just a week prior, I was still unsure of what to do, but something inside me had shifted. A few days later, I received a message from Olivia, her voice filled with rage and venom. She was furious about the certified letter I had sent to her workplace, exposing her affair with James. I had expected as much, but it still took me aback. She threatened to leave everything to her lawyer, and I knew I had to stay strong. James called soon after, his parents' faces no doubt etched with shock and disappointment. I had sent a certified letter to their home, exposing his affair to the people he loved. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of satisfaction at his predicament, but I managed to keep my emotions in check. I decided that leaving it all to my lawyer wouldn't be enough to satisfy my feelings. I needed to confront them both to make them face the music. The lawyer arranged a meeting at the law office, and I agreed to have the discussion there. The day of the meeting arrived, and Olivia and James reluctantly showed up at the office. Olivia stormed in, her anger palpable, while James looked uncomfortable and out of place. Olivia's words were laced with venom as she accused me of being a coward. James tried to calm her down, but it was clear that their relationship was on shaky ground. As we sat down at the office table, the lawyer intervened, reminding us that any violence or abusive language would result in a call to the police. Olivia's anger seemed to simmer down slightly, but it was clear that she was still seething. The lawyer began the discussion, asking James if he was seeking a divorce. Olivia sat angrily, her arms crossed, while James looked defeated. We agreed to the divorce, but the lawyer made it clear that, due to the adultery, we would need to discuss alimony. James's face clouded over at the mention of alimony, and he agreed to the divorce on the condition that we would never contact them again. I nodded quietly in agreement, 
feeling a sense of closure wash over me. Olivia looked displeased, perhaps expecting more resistance from me. When the lawyer began discussing the alimony amount, Olivia snapped, Any amount is fine. We have plenty of money. She sat up straight, her arms still crossed, as the lawyer revealed that James was the president of a jewelry company with a yearly revenue of $3 billion. James looked up frantically, trying to restrain Olivia's arm. Olivia continued, her face flushed with excitement, offering to give me a proper share of the property. The lawyer burst into uncontrollable laughter, and Olivia looked at him with a puzzled expression. The tension in the room was palpable as the lawyer struggled to compose himself. As the meeting drew to a close, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. I had finally taken control of my life and was one step closer to moving on from the pain and betrayal I had endured. I knew that this was just the beginning of my journey towards healing and closure, but for now, I felt a sense of accomplishment and empowerment. As I dabbed away tears with a handkerchief, I couldn't help but reveal the shocking truth. The president is actually Karen. Olivia's jaw dropped, her mouth agape, while James hung his head in shame, his body trembling slightly. As Karen's corporate lawyer, I'd like to clarify that I'm just doing my job. Olivia burst out laughing, her eyes sparkling with amusement. What are you talking about? Are you really a lawyer? Can lawyers lie? She asked, her tone laced with skepticism. I replied calmly, Why not ask James next to you if what I said is a lie? James, however, remained silent, his eyes fixed on the floor. Olivia's anxiety grew as she grabbed James's arms, shaking him repeatedly. You said he was the president of a $3 billion jewelry company. That's not a lie, right? She pleaded. James finally whispered, his voice barely audible. I'm sorry. The room fell silent, as if the weight of his apology had crushed the air out of us. Olivia's strength seemed to abandon her, and she let her hands fall limp. You said you were the president of a company making $3 billion a year, she muttered, her voice laced with despair. James's single apology had plunged her into a deep despair. She stood up, trembling, her eyes fixed on me accusingly. It's a lie, right? There's no way you're the president. I looked her straight in the eye, my tone calm and reassuring. Just because we're close friends doesn't mean I tell you everything, especially since you were so fixated on money. I had no intention of telling you. Olivia seemed to lose all energy, slumping down as if the weight of the truth had crushed her. I continued. Of course, the house is in my name, so James will be the one leaving. The lawyer and me took over, presenting the evidence. I showed her the photos of James and Olivia together, which she had sent to my phone. I played a recorded conversation, her voice filling the room. Hey, still clinging to the past? I want a divorce quickly. I know what you're clinging to. It's James's income. He's the president of a $3 billion jewelry company, right? You hit it because you thought I might take it. Olivia's voice was laced with embarrassment as she covered her face with her hands. Hurry up and divorce and leave that condo. It'll be mine soon. Too bad James didn't come back to you. I'll give you as much alimony as you want. Poor thing. Your aim was the money, not James. James looked down, tears spilling onto his pants. The room fell silent once more. I asked, Do you think this is over? What else is there, Olivia? You broke into the house when Karen wasn't there and stole several items, didn't you? James looked shocked, seemingly unaware of this. Olivia's hands shook as she bit her lower lip. No, not me. I don't know anything, she said, her voice trembling. As the truth began to sink in, Olivia's eyes welled up with tears. She had been blinded by her desire for wealth and status and had been willing to do whatever it took to get it. The realization was crushing, and she felt a deep sense of shame and regret. James, too, was overcome with emotion, his tears a testament to the pain and betrayal he had suffered. The room was heavy with the weight of their broken relationship and the devastating consequences of their actions. As I sat at the table, my eyes fixed on the tablet as it played a shocking video, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Olivia's wide-eyed stare mirrored my own as I watched her sneak into the bedroom, stuffing bags and jewelry into her bag. What is this? I demanded, my voice laced with incredulity. Why are you recording me? Isn't this illegal surveillance? James covered his face with his hands, his shoulders sagging under the weight of guilt. 
We've always had security cameras in our home, he mumbled. Why didn't you tell me that earlier? Who would think you'd break into steel? I shook my head, my frustration growing. You started getting a headache from our ridiculous argument and used your key without permission. You wanted those things. It's your fault for not buying them for me. The argument raged on, with neither of us listening to the lawyer's warnings to save our arguments for later. As the video continued to play, I felt a sense of betrayal wash over me. Regarding this theft, we will be filing a police report, I said firmly. Olivia's eyes widened in panic at the mention of the authorities. The police? That's a bit much, isn't it? She protested. I just borrowed something from a friend, she added, her voice trembling. I raised an eyebrow. You're not a friend. You are just a classmate. Her eyes dropped, and her shoulders slumped in defeat. Don't say that, she pleaded. I'll pay for it. I'll make up for it. Just please don't call the police. I looked down at her, my voice cold. You're going to compensate. The value of what you stole is more than your annual income. Are you sure about that? Olivia's silence was deafening. And then there was the matter of alimony. Olivia turned to James, her voice trembling as she begged. You'll pay it, right? Even if you're not the president, you still earn well, right? James remained silent, his eyes fixed on the floor. He couldn't pay it because he was about to be fired. I added, my words like a punch to the gut. That's right. Since leaving the house, James has not shown up for work. Plus, with this commotion, there have been complaints from his boss. James's eyes widened in shock. That's right. He'd been absent from work, and now his job was on the line. I continued, my voice devoid of emotion. There's still the property division, right? I'll pay with that. Olivia's eyes lit up, but I quickly extinguished her hope. That's not possible. Karen and James had a prenuptial agreement about property. You didn't hear anything from James, did you? He never told you the inconvenient truths. I looked at James with disdain, the lawyer placing a contract on the table. The agreement stated that if the marriage lasted less than five years, neither party could claim the other's property. Currently, they were in the three years of their marriage. Olivia tried to grab the document, but I warned her, my voice firm. As if to turn it up, you should handle that document carefully. It's a no terrorist deed, and you could be held legally accountable for damaging it. Olivia stopped, her eyes fixed on the document. She then half-heartedly pleaded with James. James, you have savings, right? Use that to pay. James looked at her with resentful eyes. What money? You always wanted sushi, steak, this, that. There's no way I have any savings left. It seemed he also had debts from questionable sources. Olivia's shoulders slumped, her glamorous appearance now a distant memory. This was the result of the seeds she had sown herself. The two of us sat in stunned silence, lost and defeated. And what will I do now? I asked, my voice laced with disappointment. Money isn't something you steal from others. It's something you earn through effort. As I reflect on the tumultuous aftermath of my divorce, I am reminded of the surprisingly amicable process of dividing up James's belongings and sending them back to his parents. They apologized profusely and even sent a heartfelt letter expressing their regret for their son's role in the demise of our marriage. In stark contrast, Olivia's actions caught up with her and she was interrogated by the police for her illegal entry and theft. My police report led to an investigation and eventually she was arrested and found guilty of her crimes. Although she showed remorse and a willingness to make amends, her history of theft and deception ultimately led to a more severe punishment. It was revealed that she had been stealing from men she met on a dating app, which meant she would likely face a prison sentence. No wonder she reacted so strongly to the mention of police and crime. As I moved forward, James struggled to find a new place to live settling for a two-bedroom apartment on the outskirts of town. He's been struggling to find a new job, hindered by his unexplained absences and poor attitude at his previous job. For now, he's making ends meet with day labor. I, on the other hand, threw myself into my work, pouring my energy into expanding our company's jewelry line to Europe. The idea came to me during a trip to Europe, where I took a break from everything. During that trip, I had the chance to share a glass of wine with the owner of a jewelry store in Switzerland. 
We talked passionately about jewelry designs, and I was struck by his passion and expertise. We hit it off, and he agreed to showcase my company's jewelry in his store. The owner is a wonderful man who, perhaps because of his own history with divorce, understands my heartache. To be honest, I'm focusing on sales in Switzerland, partly because I've developed a connection with him. It might be mixing business with pleasure, but I think I've earned this perk after all I've been through. That's how tough it has been for me. I receive regular updates on their situations from my lawyer after the divorce, and it's been a long and challenging road. However, I'm focusing on the future and the opportunities that lie ahead.